simple. Though there are numerous theories, frameworks, models of leadership, we will not go into the details. There is no point. We will make it more of a conversation related to our day to day functioning. And you will realize at the end of the talk, it's actually people's skill which matters most in leadership. That doesn't mean that you don't need a dominant skill. That is given. In whichever domain you are a leader, you've got to understand that. That's what we call is a lowest denominator. You have to have your dominant skills. But to, above that, the people's skills become so important without which a leader will not be able to succeed. Because it's not his expertise alone which makes any organization successful, it's the whole team, everyone within the The entire spokes in a wheel will make it go. Imagine if a couple of them are doing nuts. What happens to such a wheel? Or, try to put it other right, in, in a vehicle you have a cycle tire and a, and a water cycle tire. It can't go into it. So that's why I say, you know, the attitude matters most. Like, attitude is like a flat tire. If you want to go anywhere, you have to change it. There is no choice with us. So you will realize that end of the day, a lot of things relating to the <coughs> attitude. I as an individual as a leader, I talk about as of now as a vice chancellor, I'm a clean slate. It's left to you all to write on what you want to write on it. I have not written anything on it. That means I have no biases, no preconceived thoughts about anybody. It is all clean. Now it all depends upon how do we write on it, that depends upon what you talk, what you perform, what you discuss, and how you do things. That's what we call writing on the book. So on a clean slate, whatever you write, it all depends upon the individual. And so it's true for you as well as a leader. So be a clean slate to your subordinates. Let them write. <coughs> that means let them influence your entity. Let them influence your belief. Let them influence your opinion. The way they behave with you. When, when you say behave, the way they conduct, the way they perform how serious they are about the job, all that, their actions, reactions, within the obligation would determine what gets imprinted, imprinted on your mind. Where he or she wants to see the obligation? What is the obligation to be doing 10 years hence, 20 years down the line? Unless those three things are there in the minds of the leader, then the leader is bound to get into operational issues that are not day to day. That means he or she is more interested in the efficiency of functioning rather than the competition, rather than competing in the market, rather than growing the obligation, rather than taking the obligation ahead. Right? Hence, as a leader, I should think more about the future and try to limit myself from the day to day operations. Now, that doesn't mean that you will leave day to day operations, there are ways we will discuss how the day to day operations must be taken care of. Because if you don't take care of a day to day operation, then you can do day to day. So you got to assure day to day operations. But the important thing is where do you spend your most of the time? In thinking as well as doing. Okay? The second one is enhancing quality of education. In our case, in an RP business office, is the quality of a product. Nothing would sell better than the quality. How the quality should be improved, that's a huge task we'll discuss on some other day. Okay, so I have not gone. Basic idea is quality is giving to the beneficiary what he or she is here for. And that requires knowing him or her, understanding him or her choice. Not using unfounded uh, assumptions about what they want. There has to be informed assumptions for anyone to take a decision on this particular aspect. Otherwise, if you find, if you develop the assumptions 
You shall not inform. You are bound to have a wrong approach to what we are doing. The third one is enhancing the visibility of the university. That means letting go know the stakeholders what are you doing. And stakeholders are numerous, not just students. It includes government, it includes parents, it includes your collaborators, it includes industry, right? It includes, it includes the society around. It includes numerous other people who are interested in what you are doing. So how do we, you going to design a way out? How do we actually make up visibility? And visibility can never be greater than using your activities. We, a newspaper is good, but we're going to go beyond even that. Because newspapers have their limitations of the reach. <coughs> in our nation, suppose if we appear in newspaper, you would be around here only. But if you want to be a national institution, so we have to come out of this. You have to seek for those audiences which will make us known within the you know, sphere of education. And you have to identify who these are and how to reach them. That's where the leader has to think and act. And if you spend most of the time in the day-to-day operation, you will never have a time. Ultimately, the time is limited. You can't have unlimited time. You are not a superhuman. So you have to decide a divide, have a dividing line. This is what I spend here and this is what I spend here. And you have to take care of both. Right. And next one is student satisfaction in development and happiness. In development and happiness. in the future. 
future we may not have many more people to look after. So that students at this city is required. We got to reorient ourselves towards that. Now, when we call you a student and centricity, that means we got to look at in our own organization all touch points. Touch points means? Touch point means? Where do we have to approach? No, no, wherever the student gets contacted, you know, maybe a teacher, maybe your, what do you call the office staff, or a classroom, or a laboratory, the faculty, or your in the examination, wherever it is. Wherever he or she comes into contact, that's a touch point. Now if that touch point experience is not good, what happens? Negativity. And negativity does not uh, bring immediate bad results, but slowly builds up into a complete negative orientation. It's a slow poison. It's a slow poison. Nothing, nothing actually gets demolished in the fraction of a second unless a disaster strikes. The way it takes time, the way, the way it takes time to build, it also gets spoiled for a period of time, not immediately. Maybe the rate will be faster than building. Okay? So since uh, here, we said that since here all the principals and the directors are sitting, I think the first one uh, you can uh, maybe you can add uh, universities less colleges. It's about everything. It doesn't matter. You know, so that, uh, it's your leader, no? That's, that's, that's that message. No, no, it's all understood. This is your obligation. Wherever you are, you are a leader. Yeah. So you may be the leader of the center. See that in your city. Universities as a whole, particularly. Yeah. Why do you say So that means it's okay. It's okay. Great thing all of us. Yes, I understand. Thanks. There are levels of leadership. Leadership need not to flow from top. It flows at the bottom. <coughs> Even the peer can display this leadership space. Leadership doesn't mean he or she has to have followers. <laughs> leadership doesn't mean that he or she has to honor. Right? Suppose if I'm the peer and I have the responsibility of keeping this room neat and clean and tidy. What do I need to think about? First of all, I need to think how this room should look like. Isn't it? The other way is, if I'm not taking the leadership role, I'll come every morning, roll it out, and clean it. Okay. So leader is one who knows the way, shows the way, and finally, goes the way. Another one is our quality of education will improve every year of the start. 
we have process part. The third one is we need to have a very high placement or our students should join PG programs in rest of the universities. Or whatever other you know, outcomes you have designed for the university. Modern is leadership theater, just touch them. There are many, let's not debate them. But these four are the ones which are going around. Transformational leadership theory, servant leadership, shepherd leadership, and situational leadership. Transformational. There is something called transactional. <coughs> is the one which we keep undertaking our activity day to day. That's a transaction. Would you paper sign coming? Would you order dinner? Would you go? Yeah, okay. Which, you know, routine work which I am undertaking day to day. Would you report submit coming in? Right? Would you get classes cutting coming in? Isn't it? Would you time for calendar coming in? Yeah, but no, Joby routine work. This case, Satan, time dimension work. That is all transactional. The problems of the student, I'll solve. Problems of faculty, I'll solve. Take care of the staff problems, etc. So they are all transactions. There's, there's nothing new about them. There they are day to day operations which keep happening. Now you move from there. In terms of envisioning your obligation, in terms of changing the culture in order to achieve your uh, vision, in terms of transforming people. Processes that means leading to what we call as quality improvement. We call it a transformational leadership. Taking actions where it is required to uplift you, or the one which will catapult you in the next orbit, or the one which will take you on a spiral rather than. <coughs> So all that activity which I mentioned earlier would keep you around the circle. Day to day activity to work for it. You know, like I said, you have to say, you institutions, organizations. File hai, pass go ke, remarks a ghe, usko a ghe bada ghe a ghe. You know, that's, there's input and there's an output. No. Here, it has to be a complete transformation of processes leading to a better outcome. Sir, sir, yeah. sir, sir. I'm discussing with it. Then you are servant leadership. You also heard about Mahatma Gandhi, then Nelson Mandela. <coughs> this kind of people, they follow servant leadership. <laughs> Trusteeship. That means I am the trustee of the nation. I withhold <coughs> all the principles. Invite in me and take care of what has been entrusted to me and work as a servant of the people for the benefit of <coughs> So I sit on that chair to take care of my people. I don't believe in anything else. So I can have vision, I can have my objectives, but I am all that is doing for the obligation, for the <coughs> then you call us shepherd. Shepherd, what is it? Gadariya. Gadariya, what is it? What is it? He or she is behind the teacher, behind. And his flock is ahead. What does it mean? Is I give you freedom to do. What is you are required to do? I'm not going to take a sample stage. I will allow you to take your decisions to get into the limelight, to come into the focus. I stay back. So I could be behind, I could be in the front, and I could be in the center. So I determine when I want to be that. So if there is a crisis, I should be in the front. If everything is going normal, I'm behind. My team is doing it. 
And when it comes to taking credit, I step behind, let my team take a credit. Or, when things are going wrong, I am among my people, helping them, not leading, helping them to accomplish the objectives. That is a shepherd leadership. Some people follow it. And only thing is that, how to shepherd is important. Remaining always behind is not going to do a good to the organization. Because organizations are not going to remain stable for long. They, they, they will all face turbulence. So when it's turbulence, then as a leader I should hide behind. I need to come forward. <clears throat> I should escape from there. I go to take a center stage. That is your point. And last one is situation. That means what style I use all depends upon what is the situation. Situation here means it can be defined in many ways. The nature of the job, the kind of the people who are with me, and the environment itself. So there is no fixed style of leadership. At times I go to be strict. At times I will be celebrating. Maybe I could be democratic. That means I allow everyone to participate and take a decision. But when there is a crisis, you can't go off with a thing. You cannot get a good decision. Yes. Parliament can go in the team, they can take a decision. They can take a decision. They can take a decision. Too much democracy is not uh, appropriate when decision taking requires you know, least time. So, which one? One should use. I mean, there is no directive as such. This all again depends upon the situation, depends upon the leader himself, also what he or she prefers. But what is important is one should know all of these. That these are different ways of leading people. They have to be focused. We can't move like a bee from one place to another place or hop from one place to another place. Hoping has to be stopped. We go to forget. Okay, quality is quality. Collaborations is collaboration. Now you got to determine in your college focus areas. And divide it among the wrong people. Because that's where the delegation comes to play. Your role then becomes guiding them, monitoring them, and correcting the problem. If you try to, you know, put your legs everywhere, then nothing can be because then the focus is too much. <coughs> focus consciously be upper determined country. Monitoring may have, guiding may have, or thinking may have. If, if you start indulging yourself, doing the actual thing, then you will not be able to do many things. Your role should be developing your people. Showing them that vision. Where you want to reach and make it a shared vision. In fact, let them have a buy-in. Unless they buy in, you will not be able to travel far. Good fearless in making a change. Fearless.
अस्त्र उपयोग और ना कुछ इतना ऐसी नहीं सर तभी तो हिंदी का वर्ड है हा उसको उल्टा पढ़ते हैं तो रहा रहा जो वो रहा हाँ होता रहना चाहिए इंटेंसिटी इंटेंसिटी इन योर एक्शंस इंटेंसिटी क्या होती है जील 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 का हेल्प इन इंटेंसिटी इधर का
or inaction or a flow of the system.
because the company influences the person. If you sit in the company for virus, you're bound to get infected by virus. If it is corona, then it's more dangerous. So the people who are with you of those nature, then you will get badly infected. So you should know how much time you spend on what issues to be spent. Yes, if there are, first of all, I advise a leader, <coughs> do not suspect anyone in your organization of wrongdoing. Yes. Do suspect for keeping an eye on everything happening else. <coughs> but not for one. Right? Number two, there is nothing my mind or his mind. It is all our man. So if somebody can be his or her man, he must he can be your man also. Can't it be? Yes. Same way, no? Why do you can't be your man? Why was he became his or her man? You influence him or make him more than your man. So have that, you know, all encompassing <coughs> attitude that everyone in the organization is your man. But if you have that big heart, then we will not have any problems of each other. Okay. When life gets blurred, I just focus. When life gets blurred, Daisy, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what will change. You don't know where are you going. Then you put your focus on a particular thing. When you put your focus, when you put your energy, then the life starts becoming clearer. But if it is hazy and you stop doing it, then it will remain all through hazy. Stop doing the work of few levels. <laughs> stop micromanaging. You got to find a way of doing things. Please, you are not a superhuman being. Please don't do work for somebody else. <clears throat> Let your subordinates do their work. And you should know how to take care of whether they are doing or not doing. There are proper ways of developing monitoring system. Okay. Develop a monitoring system, have an eye through that mechanism, and let them perform their job. I would rather suggest let them do your job, some of your jobs, through delegation, through entrusting the higher order responsibility, so that you get more time of thinking strategically, so that you get more time to do far bigger jobs for your college. Sir, huh? uh, I just wanted to add something to yes? this. Uh, there was an article in HDR, mm -hmm. back in 1987. About? Uh, about operational efficiency versus strategy. Strategy, yeah. So it was uh, by Michael Porter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, he very well talked about the same concept that if we provide enough flexibility methods, to the subordinates, the organization will definitely be in a position to reach the strategy which it wants to reach. Uh, he has very, uh, very well cited the example of Japan where they don't strategize, they don't prepare any strategy but operational efficiency is very high. It automatically leads to attainment of the desired goals. So because, see, if you look at Japanese vis-a-vis -vis, uh, American cars or electronics <clears throat> at that point of time. See, that era of 80s <clears throat> was different than now. Americans always believed in big, whether it was a big car or a big electronic item. Yeah, exactly. Quality, yeah, quality wasn't all their focus. The Japanese brought the quality and the miniaturization. Hence the cost kept on reducing. So we you think what Gates asked for gets done. Look up. If you don't ask people to perform, to do specific things, it will never get performed. You try for six months in this semester and next semester and see, even if they know they have to perform, whether this gets performed or not. So underline meaning here is you have to ask people to get those things done 
and continuously remind them, continuously monitor them. If you let your monetary mechanism slow down, then you will find things are not done. Second thing, what gets measured gets done even better. So saying that we must improve our quality is not going to help us. Do you have something measurable output? How quality will be improved? What are those measurements? You let the people know measurements. Today we said we need to improve our, uh, our publication. We said, okay, two publications here, one, two publications here, and one this thing here. This is all specified. It all quantified. So at the end of the year or a semester, you can say, okay, hey, this is what you were supposed to. What is your own? And the third one says, what gets rewarded and recognized gets done on the best. This is where the incentive system which has been proposed by Registrar has to come into play now. Understand my dear? Yes. Okay, so if whatever gets done, if you don't reward, in whatever way, financially, non-financially, at so, least, at least you start. Come say. Come say. Come but I think that the things have been already worked out. The only thing is because of this COVID pandemic, uh, the things have uh, got stranded and uh, stagnant. But uh, very soon we are expecting the things to resume back to normal. And uh, the reward scheme, the recognition scheme, the schemes will also be functional uh, once we resume back. And, and we till then, very short. Till then, short is never short. <laughs> till then, sir, go on here. Go on, go till then. Go on here. Till then, non-financial activities get recognition. Some recognition, some appreciation. A letter, letter, yes. Appreciation letters is not uh, there is no innovation and there is no no it's not a question of innovation. Please start. <laughs> start. All those people who have performed well, published well, let's have a, <coughs> at least yeah. an appreciation. I call from my office, going there and congratulating them. Sure. Let's start that. Let's start that. Sir, it will be a very good idea. Yeah. Let's start that. Let's appreciate, recognize whatever people are doing. Financial might fall or two months or three months later. Appreciation certificates, letters uh, can be started right now. And for the financial uh, rewards and financial recognitions, we still need to so let's start at least a job. month or two. Right. People so who have back and we take our approval from the management on this. People who have published in the uh, those scholars, scholars, journals, we start appreciating them. Sure. Okay. So let's have the list of those people in the to please share the data about uh, the publications. And those who have got uh, patents or the publish, uh, publications done in uh, uh, the databases like Scopus, Web of Science, uh, PubMed, or uh, UGC Care List. And, uh, no, UGC Care List will not include now for this. Okay. I think you do you want UGC Care List to be included? Appreciation is better. Okay. Well, well, is we request uh, the members to please share share with us the data so that uh, our office will start working over it and uh, after the taking due approval of Honorable Vice Chancellor, we will uh, issue the uh, certificates of appreciation. Now, it may not be a big thing, but it's an important step towards changing culture. And data from the state, from the rate of joining the institution? No, but current year, 2019, no? Uh, July, only. Uh, July, July 19, till 2019, July. <coughs> Three things about this and the team responsibility. <coughs> but you know, 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 you know
most important. Probably many of us may not have an idea why I'm there in that chair. Many of us may be moving me. <laughs> why I'm in that chair? It takes a lot of time for us to realize what's my responsibility. What's that I'm supposed to do? I do put signatures every day in and out. Check attendance, do this, that. Uske liye zero thi na ina apki meri. Uske liye ekala bhot hai. If you keep doing that work, then tomorrow we'll have more work. <laughs> then we will better job. So let's identify why we are there in that particular position. What's our role? And I will like each one of us. To start defining our roles by your own self, I think I started. I already let me tell you, I am trying to put my house in order first, and only then I'll ask you to put your house. In. So I am on that road. I ask all my people in the secretary to put here what are they expected to do before I decide their roles and responsibilities. Keep writing. So, for example, if I were to do it my own role, I said that. What? How I define letter? Can I have collaborations? Quality improvement? Isn't it? Process improvement? So I have listed almost about more than 60 or 70. Can I give you a number? Slide number? How many items are there? 70. 70 items. It is like five or six slides. Six slides. Having that and putting or testing on my office or putting on my table reminds me every day. Is it being Santa? Nobody has a superhuman big brains. You need some instrument, some mechanism to let you remind from time to time what you are supposed to do. Otherwise, under this complex. A difficult life, you are bound to forget many things, and we have a tendency playing the role of an electric current. What is that electric current? Go on. Let's just move it. What's that? Electric current. What is it? It's called behavior. And that's a human tendency. That, that uh, if we say in positive sense, that is spread light, and if uh, You are uh, not given safety and touching it directly. That you shock. I'm seeing you the shock. Yeah, you shock directly. And the day. But if if I build a huge resistance, it can't do much. Did <laughs> <laughs> it? So you know, current has a tendency to avoid difficult path. That is resistance. Takes the easiest path. Takes the easiest path. That means the path which has least resistance. So we all human beings have a tendency to do those things which doesn't require enough anything, enough thinking, enough effort, or enough of many things. So that's a normal human tendency. It's not you and me or anybody else. So that tendency has to be broken. The habits have to be changed. And this is called, I mean, whether you call it a roadmap. You call it a KRAs, or you call it a dashboard, whatever mechanism you can develop that helps us remind to go on or go against or go head on against difficult situations. As all of us have that privilege, yeah, I I can understand and appreciate the fact that once in a while we need a some off day, some call. Everyone has an off day. Okay, on a particular day you may not be so energetic, so enthusiastic. Or you may not have that lot of thinking on that day, so you might take to that easier view. That's fair enough. It's all acceptable. It's not an issue. So a leader must know what they must do, but also know and let it know how and why should it be done, which is very important. This is what is missing. And whenever you tell to your subordinates that what they are supposed to do or what you expect them to do. Please tell them two things. Why 
am I asking you to do? And how would you do it? Because they may not follow the way you want them to follow. They might do a different thing. They didn't work very They may not appreciate why this thing is being done. Why we are asked to do with a lot of things is to check out what will happen because of this. So unless you share the reasons why a particular thing is required to be done, they will not appreciate it. And finally I say, are we ready to do it or ready to do it? That's the moon question. Are we ready in terms of resources, in terms of our preparedness, in terms of you know, emotionally, are we ready? If not, then you're going to prepare us. Or is there a willingness? Now, willingness cannot come without a leader being with them. Leader being among them. The first matter, water and leader. Leader needs to behave like a water. What are the characteristics of water? You can see it needs to adjust. Any situation and a shape. Find your own way to flow. Right. So depending upon the situation, a leader has to change itself. Like water changes. And but it doesn't stop flowing. It finds its own way. If there is a storm, it takes around the storm. Right. If there is a ditch, it gives the ditch and then overflow. Second one is, learn to sail in all conditions. See, as a leader, we can't change many things. There is something called non controllable So if I'm a leader, I need to clearly define in my department, my obligation, what are those non-controllables and what are those controllables. There is no point striking your head against non-controllables because you cannot change them. Right? So look for those controllables within your department. See, competition. Can you change? You know, many times when it comes to admissions, we say, so competition work okay. It moves together. <laughs> Can you change it? That's the situation. To overcome that, what is it in our hand? You try to do that. You can have better promotion. Right? You can have a better quality. You can have a better placement. And you can have a good rapport with students. So try and look at those you know, controllables which you can change. Rather than spending your time and getting demotivated by dealing with non controllables. See, when you bring these issues, the competition is very high, the demand is very high. What is it? What happens? You can only bring negativity in the discussions in the department and have everybody demotivated. So, when you sit down as a leader, you clearly define this is what is my non controllable and this is what I am controllable. I will work on them. This I am not going to touch. I can only adjust to them and adapt to them by making changes in my controllables. That is what I can do. Humility is the greatest hallmark of any human being. B or C has to stay low and calm. Let's not try to get ahead by getting things done by book or book. Putting your people under pressure. Right? Helping your subordinates to overcome challenges and grow them will be far more fulfilling and meaningful to us. Rather than trying to get things through them by doing what? Look! Look! Leaders declare, I don't care, I need this to be done by book or So when you speak these words, you already declare that you don't care for people. 
because they are really team. And you also don't care for ethics. For you, the results are, or rather output, is more important than the process or the people. If this is declared, then you create a different culture within the organization. Fourth thing, be in harmony. Harmony with the own nature. See, we say we exist in a society, They're mostly ruling around us. So we have to stay in harmony with them. Help those people, support, contribute. But definitely don't have anything done against their egos, their culture. It's not offending. You've got to stay in harmony with surroundings. And this that's what the water does. Water helps living things, helps the flora and fauna to grow and sustain. It does not. Uproot them. Unless it is a storm. Unless it is a storm water. Okay, so we are not talking about storm water, we are talking about the normal flowing water. And second one is openness. It's open to change. Depending upon the temperature or pressure, the water can take any of the shape. Easily. Right? And therefore, once ability to adapt and remain flexible to endure. Because the endurance would only come if you are able to adapt and stay flexible as a leader. Otherwise your success will not endure. That means it will not last for longer. You might get those results with pressure for a short period of time, but if you are looking for a long-term endurance, that is not a right start. Similarly, we have other relation from stone and the sand. Stone and the sand. Look at waves does not differentiate between its, its between the sand or a stone. It's all on both in same amount. <coughs> Equally. So let's find which one we are. Are we stone or a sand? Isn't it? But the response to the rain from these two things is different based upon their characteristics. So what is the characteristics of this stone? It's hard. Isn't it? It's rigid. So since it is rigid and hard, the water immediately goes out. It doesn't stay there. But contrary to that, sand is Soft and flexible. And the water gets mingled with the sand and the place is manifest. So both sand and water remains in harmony because of the characteristics of the sand. Characteristics of the sand. So if we are soft and flexible, we would be in harmony with the culture and with the people within the organization. As I said, rigidity, where should be rigidity? On your goals. What is that you want to achieve? You, you, you can't be flexible on that. But how it should be done? Who should contribute to where? That flexibility should be used. If you don't use flexibility, I'm not sure whether we would be able to reach to our goals. Then comes your leadership lessons from the team back. Ten lessons it says from the team back. One by one, let's look at Leadership is not necessarily learned from captains of the industry, it says. Leadership can be learned from the people at the downmost level. Whether they are vendors, street sellers, <coughs> security guards, or last five people in the organization who connect me. How? Irrespective of, irrespective of the COVID situation, these e-tailers 
have been assuring the delivery of their goods. The last mile people have braved all the situations. Look at the vendor in the street to meet his objective of the day. He doesn't care for sun or heat or rain. He doesn't get tired by shouting to sell his product. What does it mean? It means only the hard work pays the thing. And he knows where to go for selling his goods. So as a person we should need to identify our markets. You, you, you can't sell those things in post colonies. Nobody will buy it from you. So there are a lot of leadership elections can be had from the downmost people. So let's look key by concept. First is a labor substance hmm? We've been saying that please start an English. Right? The university also one must visit every place in the college. Right? They also have to yeah, that is inside. One should know what's what happening. Is what is happening outside the your college? You can always learn. It's like a fresh window. Think that you open your own window. Two things happen. You are able to see outside what is happening. That means what X college is doing, what Y college is doing, can I learn from them? What outside my university people are doing, I can learn from them. And second thing is you always have fresh air coming in. If you have a window open, that means you can have a great idea coming from outside if you interact with the people. If you close your window and circulate inside air through AC, then you have no access to the outside world. So the outside opinions, outside ideas, outside things will never reach to you. You will never get fresh enough. Hence, being porous is important for a leader. So be open to the outside ideas. Within your own department also. Don't get shielded within the department. Don't have that attitude of I know all. No, we don't know many things. We do not know many things. Let me accept it. I am the guy who failed in drawing. Look, sir. I am the guy who failed in drawing. So how can I claim that I know everything? Or usse drawing se dar ke urdu le liya. Dar din urdu mein bata Ali be be se aage nahi bada. Fir wapas usse aage. So let's not claim that we all know all kind. No, we we don't know all things in this world. There are a few things we know. But only grace is that whatever we know, we should know well, so that we are able to perform our job. Fourth thing is, he works work. Never mind where they are placed in the cup. A true leader would perform irrespective of his designation. Whether he is an office assistant or the vice chancellor or the chancellor. Whatever position he or she is, he or she would always perform. Chai aapki bed ko pehle dalo, phir upar se perform dalo, या पानी के अंदर भी टीम को डाल दो इट डज नॉट मैटर इट्स वर्क इज टू गिव यू अ गुड टीम प्रोवाइडेड इट हैज दोस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स बीइंग पॉर्स इज इट सो अ गुड लीडर वुड ऑलवेज परफॉर्म वेयर एवर ही ओ सी वेदर इट्स इन डिफिकल्ट सिचुएशंस और इन इजी सिचुएशंस और अ मिडिल लेवल और है हाय और वेयर एवर ही ओ सी फिफ्थ वन Sometimes one tea bag is just not enough. Kabi kabi chai bag ke liye, kabi kabi ek tea bag se kam nahi chalta. So you have to add more tea bags. That means you might need as a leader more support from outside or from inside. So don't hesitate for asking the support from people within the organization. Or outside the organization. As we said, many of us do not know many things. Now, all of us don't know many things. So, how do you get to know those things? Who will tell you? This has to come from support. So, if I have to deal with computers, 
I'm following, if I deal with law, the management, I follow him, if I do with physiotherapy, I will follow somebody. Isn't it? Like what? If within your own domain, you cannot explain everything. You have to follow somebody. So don't hesitate to take a support and accept, hey guys, I don't know this. Please help me. Please support me. Or we do it. And sometimes you need to add more weight and sugar to make a good thing. Isn't it? So you have to bring more people to your team. Source the people from outside. Pick and choose them to make a good team so that it can deliver to your expectations. Seventh one says, someone else, someone else holds the string always. It's the tea drinker who holds the
quality of tea on the table is what we are coming <coughs> That's the reason. And finally, eventually tea bags needs to make way and get out. If not to prepare next tea, the existing tea bags have to be thrown out. So if you want the perpetuity of your obligation, the leaders have to give way to others. They have to rise. You can't go and be a principal of the college. You have to find something up there. Too long a place has its own issues. You can't continue to be the vice chancellor of the university for 10 years, 12 years. Why? Because then you become Dimak. <laughs> you stop, in fact, evolving. You stop bringing energy. <coughs> Hence, if you, if you are looking for fresh tea, the existing tea bag has to make way for the next tea bag. That's the, uh, a new normal. Or rather, it's a normal, no? You see, nothing. Extraordinary or abnormal, for every duty the whole bank has to give way. So you want to bring fresh energy, fresh outlook, re energize your system, you've got to have a new person on the level of affairs. That's what the team bank talks all about. So we have seen three important today metaphors. First, let me say about water, water, sandstone, sandstone, and tea bags. So, all these three, three metaphors actually give you a lot of message about leadership. Go and look at them. We already get them. I find you. Do you have energy to sustain anyone? This could be This could be Hey, hello. But that is going to be a good thing. Not necessary. Not necessary. Yeah, I don't want to be there. Necessary. Uh, we would, uh, the remaining part, the two aspects which is left, that is some portions of this, and then the major important thing is change management, change management, because that's what we need to do. If we want to bring change, we should also know how to manage the change. What it takes to manage the change, how to bring the change, what are the issues, what are those, you know, uh, parameters which need to touch. You know, I will give you a, a principle, another ancient principle. You know, it says about when you're looking for a change. It says about see why all animals have not been domesticated by human race. Why all animals have not been domesticated by human race. This is a major reason is not their positive qualities. It's about their negative qualities. So when you relate this metaphor kind of to an organization, it says identify those negative things in your organization. Because negative things will damage you more than the positive things. <coughs> I, and ever since we were senior people, Man, Shivani Madam said a question to Shivani. When you selected your husband, not other way around, huh? what was your parameters? There must have been good qualities and poor qualities. Right? So when you looked at those good qualities, and you looked at those poor qualities or bad qualities, you realize that even if there was a one bad quality you found, you would reject it. Yeah, if the bad quality is supposed to be all good quality, Even if there is a bad quality. So when you 
टॉकिंग अबाउट कि ये ये तो होना ही चाहिए अगर इसमें से नहीं है तो इसलिए आपकी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में आपको आउटलाइन करना है कि वट इज दैट आई नीड टू डू and how can i do it for all these parameters identify that negative parameter and work on it otherwise we will keep going down the circle so there has to be a defined approach when you are looking for a change otherwise i like the actor and sorry uh, there was an ad on sylvania Luxman bulbs. Sorry, घर के बगल लोगों. Remember old time man? Yes. Not many people remember it. Sylvania Luxman. Sorry, घर के बगल लोगों. So when when we are talking about the change management, don't do that. Be cautious about. क्या बदलना है आपको? You need to identify. Otherwise, we might end up even the worst situation. Because we might change things which are going well, and we can claim that we are making change. Because we have, that's why it's important that we need to spend a lot of time on analysis, analyzing what's going on around. Who is doing what? How one supposed to do it? Which activity is contributing how much to our performance? Then you get to know that yes, these are few activities which are actually hindering our progression. So the question which you asked about going around circles and other things, let me get back to this. Yeah. My question was related to spiraling. Spiraling. How you spend your time or what you do? Make a list, review it, and plot. ये लैडर और सर Look for the result. It is moving. Ha. Yeah. Moving up. Yes, moving up. Moving up. <coughs> this is what is it doing? Like a spring. Yeah. yeah. Like, like a spring. It's moving up. No. Yeah. From one stage to next stage, next stage, next stage, like this. You are moving, moving upward. That's called spiral. The movement is spiral. Okay. Uh, but the, it should, you know, so instead of separate circle, it should be more spiral. No, it should be more spiral. No, it should be more spiral. Around that you 
you are becoming bigger and bigger. Okay. Here I am talking about moving away from the orbit. Okay. Back to next one. Yeah, step. You are displacing that. Uh, yeah, lot of the, the, my, my, yeah. my orbit is being broken. I am moving away from the orbit. Right. And now how do I move from orbit? I have to leave things what we have been doing. Because if I continue to do those things or I continue to focus my effort on those things, I can probably get larger. But I am not break the shackles. That is the issue. Now this requires a completely different thinking. This requires moving away from what we have been doing. Or the way you have been doing, add something new, bring new processes, methods, so that you can break that shackle, so break that orbit and get out of the orbit. It's like uh, <coughs> your rockets. Unless it uh, you know, goes out of the uh, stratosphere, which one? Yeah. it cannot go into the space. So that's called orbit change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ah, you, have to, you have to pull it. Yeah. So that is a that is a orbit change. Yeah. So orbit change. Yeah. That is orbit change. That. So you need a big thrust or a force to change that orbit. And this is what we are in fact talking about. Well, this this uh, this spiral is basically improvement in the same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Keep improving. Keep improving. Yeah. Keep improving. Yeah. Uh, like you can bring something. You can bring the other n numbers of spiral and all are moving in different different orbit and you have to go to higher orbit. Higher orbit. You have to break the orbit, yes. the current orbit of yours. And move to the next or higher orbit. Higher, higher orbit. And that requires a great transfer. Otherwise you cannot see. Principle 1k, why can't you see orbit? Yeah, good point. Any other 